You uh, better get comfortable, my friends, because uh, I have been thrifting this past several months and found so many great things. I may have even come across the deceased estate of a local dressmaker who happens to have a stash or a hoard as much as I do, at least when I will be at that point. So uh, needless to say, I have so many haberdashery, fabric, clothes, all sorts of things here that I'm going to uh, show you through all of my treasures today. Welcome back my friends. It is delightful to see you here again today. Uh, if we are in fact just meeting for the first time, welcome. My name is Evelyn Wood and I'm the creator of VintageSewingSchool.com and here on this channel we talk about everything sewing to help you get better at your sewing. Sometimes it involves uh, thrifting sewing things and that's what we're talking about today because I think there's no better way to actually get all of your sewing supplies and equipment and fabric and clothing and just things in general is by thrifting and secondhand. So I collect these for the several few months uh, and I collect them all in a pile. So I've had all these things in a pile waiting to show you. So I hope uh, that you um, enjoy this. I know you all enjoy them so much. It's always fun to see what people find, right? So I have a mix of some garage sales, some thrift store items. Let me start with some of the uh, things that I have uh, thrifted and then I will talk about that amazing deceased estate, uh, all of that collection. Uh, after that. So let's start with some of, well, let's get some of these fabrics. So some fabrics I found uh, lately thrifting are some uh, cotton knit in a navy, which I adore. Another cotton uh, corduroy, which is just this lovely shade of blue. It is beautiful. I can imagine like a little pinafore out of this one. That would be amazing. And some lovely cotton uh, eyelet, um, just, you know, lawn fabric here. I always love these. I think some little shirts and all sorts of things. Nice cool summer tops would be great. And I found this vintage one, which I think has to be pulled apart to be appreciated. It, it is a border print um, and all of my favorite colors. How fantastic is this? So this is doubled over. So Obviously, I have to do something with the uh, border print on this, maybe a nice summer skirt, very tropical, very where I am right now, although my outfit today is not very tropical, uh, but those are some fabrics that I thrifted. And I happened to also find recently, uh, believe it or not, I never actually have had one of these before. And that is the ye old uh, tomato pin cushion. I've always had different things, but I've actually never had one of these. So I think this will mostly be used in my sort of back display. I think it's really cute. So yes, possibly. So I've always heard the traditional ones, of course, probably some of the more cheaper modern ones aren't, but I've heard that the little tomato here is full of more like metallic type uh, dust that when you poke your pins through sharpens it. Uh, at least that's what I've heard about the old-fashioned ones. I'd love to know. Maybe I will experiment and see. It's definitely made out of something different, so that's a good sign. I found a bunch of these gorgeous ribbons, uh, this like velvet navy, velvet black one, and then these rayon um, ribbons here. They are so soft. I collect any of these types of things, even small lengths like this one. Um, it could just make a nice little bow at the front of something. Uh, because any of the trims and ribbons you find in the store today are polyester and horrible. I'm sure you know this. So I really, really, um, I love collecting these for my stash for just the little bits here and there. Some more uh, cotton rickrack. I have quite a bit of this. I just kind of can't leave it behind when it's really nice. Uh, and I have uh, able to manage to find a lot of old fashioned hem tape. So this is basically bias tape, but it's just really, really uh, large meant for, well, this is meant for hemming. And so it helps you to ease in, sort of instead of cutting a facing on your hem, you would use a bias tape because it molds just like a facing wood uh, on sort of circular skirts and those types to help ease in that fullness. We talked about that actually recently in this video on uh, hemming choices. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you would use. It was used a lot. So I found a few different colors. I love these. Um, I probably have to, free treat these being so old and 100% cotton so they don't shrink of course. 
And I was super lucky to find some silk ribbons and embroidery fuss. So this one is not silk and this will be thrown out. But the rest of these are gorgeous silk ribbons for, you know, ribbon embroidery. So I definitely was not going to leave these behind. Uh, I have absolute plans of, you know, learning how to do that beautiful silk ribbon embroidery um, at one stage and I have added to my stash and of course when you see silk embroidery threads they are not to be left behind either. These are sort of my colors for all sorts of beautiful lovely silk embroidery threads. It's hard to find I know so I snapped those up for just a few dollars. Something I've been looking for lately is a little basket and I was really happy to find one actually. Uh, so this I plan on popping, uh, actually having on my sewing table to put all of my scissors, pencils, erasers, things that I use all of the time, uh, but that I can just sit down and actually very easily move it around, but keep everything in place, uh, you know, as needed. So I can put it away from the table when I need the whole table, but just keep it all here. So it has this little, um, <laughs> I probably what I'll do is actually use the, I don't know if you can see the red, on my sewing box back here, uh, that red velvet, uh, I will actually, I think, line it in the same there. So it's sort of, you know, matching everything in here. But this is a really good find because I found some horrible plastic ones and they were not, not very nice at all. Uh, okay, so, ooh. Let's continue on the sewing things um, and this deceased estate. So this one I went to, I saw a little local classifieds ads and uh, there was lots of sewing things. So I was really intrigued. I always get too carried away when I'm there to film the, the, the place so you can see it, but it was literally somebody's garage. She had the entire, like a separate garage house type thing uh, set up as her sewing room and that's where they'd set up everything. And I mean, it was, she used to be a dressmaker, um, small town, dressmaker so she did everybody's wedding dresses everybody's formal dresses or prom dresses and uh, for many many years but uh, obviously um, now is all um, going to new homes so I found a lot of things so she just had packets and packets and packets and took me back to my days of doing the same sort of thing so what did I find I took away I, I was very restrained so I found some hooks and eye sets um, I think you can't have enough of these, some trouser slices, sliders, and some hooks and eyes of different sizes. They're always good to have as backup because you just want them when you need them. I did find some sewing machine needles. Uh, she had, there was so many there, but I already kind of have a big stash. Uh, so I did find some, um, a twin stretch, some jeans ones that I don't really have much of, uh, some jersey ball points. So add these to my collection. Again, you just kind of want a really broad range. And when you find them for, I think these were 50 cents or a dollar a packet, that's when you definitely stock up on those types of things. Now, uh, I found this one. I have a couple of these. This is like a ye old thimble. Now these I really love because they actually fit on my uh, fingers. So um, this actually works. The ones that go on, obviously these nails uh, do not work with thimbles. So it needs to be open topped. These work quite good. Um, you know, you just sort of want to be able to push through your needle and this is uh, these work quite well for me. Um, or my uh, homemade leather one is what I like. So these are quite hard to find. Um, so I was happy to add this one. And hmm. There was in any true dressmaker um, situation here, she had, there was like boxes of unpicks. <laughs> That's right, seam rippers. So um, I think some of them were quite used. It was quite funny, uh, but I managed to kind of, there was a box of threads and I was like sneakily like trying them to see how sharp they were. And I did pick a few. Uh, these are my favorite clover ones. So that was good to have these because you always need more. Uh, seam rippers on hand, sharp ones, always want sharp ones. Uh, I found a Spizo Vix, so I took this because um, this is always handy to have. So I have used to this in the past with different things. Uh, it's like a double-sided interfacing for adding appliques, transfers, things that you want to sort of stick and glue. One side of fabric, you can cut it out, put it onto your other bit, then peel it off and then stick it on there and it's kind of sticked on. So that's what this is for. There's all different types of um, wonderful things like this when you're looking, uh, again, you know, for $2, that's quite a bargain. So that's my kind of um, price I add to my uh, little stash. 
she had boxes and boxes of um, uh, like these are overall buckles. So I grabbed a few from my stash again. I do plan on lots of pinafores and things. So I think they might come in handy. Oh look, um, is this more rickrack or is this the same? No, this is, oh, this is the same rickrack. This was supposed to be with this pile here. So of course, when you find the same, you buy both because you never know when you want like long lengths to be able to do something amazing with lots of the same thing. Uh, so I also found this buckle. I think it is quite cute. I like these um, nice metal, beautiful. I think this will look really great on some uh, different belts I have in mind. I think I, I really want to make wider ones. So I'm going to use it like this to be able to pull through. I think that's going to be really useful. Found she had a little uh, old fashioned dining mushroom. These are really hard to find these days. Uh, I do have my beautiful uh, mushroom colored one that I'll use, but um, I can't resist finding a pro like vintage one as well a few little things a little red plastic buckle it's kind of plastic it's not amazing but i thought well it's you know better in my stash than probably no one else is going to take it um you never know red is my color of course you never know so i found some zips though uh some beautiful vintage metal ones these have been taken out of dresses i can tell look how smooth and beautiful these are they're not all like this this is how you test whether you take them home or not if they uh, move real nicely. So these are gorgeous. These will go into dresses. A little bit of lace, um, found this one here. It has this like little red trim. So it's to like poke out of um, edges, like piping or something. But instead of piping, it's like a little, little red, like scalloped edge that will look so good around a little collar or something like this. And some more uh, lovely uh, lace here. This one's quite nice. I think I'll use this for some insertion lace or something. It's nylon, um, not that old, but there's a quite a lot of it. And I did uh, take home this. This is just a craft ribbon, but it is cotton um, and just really nice. It's kind of that cream. Um, it's sort of a navy black stripe through it. I think there's all sorts of uses and sometimes you just want some utility things, even not for clothing. This will be really handy. And again, like I would never find this for only a dollar elsewhere. So anything natural, I'm really into having in my stash for you never know when you need it. This one's really interesting. So uh, in her little collection of accessories though, she had one of these. Some of you may have seen this before, others not. These are little glove hooks. Uh, so I would presume this is probably from 50s or 60s. And so what you do is this hooks around your handbag handle. And so this hangs off. And then this here is what clips on and you clip your gloves into this. And of course, because everyone wears gloves around everywhere, you need a little clip when you go inside or doing things you take them off and you hook them in here. Of course, you could hook all sorts of things in here, um, but I think these are most adorable. I don't really wear gloves anymore because I live in the tropics now. It's almost impossible to wear anything like that, but I could see this for my hat, say, <laughs> rather than gloves, a uh, hat from the sun. So that um, is maybe more the use that I will use this for. But if you see th something like this, you definitely pick it up because you won't find one like that anymore. They don't make these anymore. And of course, there was fabric. So most of it was... Uh, polyester and things that I wasn't really interested in but I did grab a few rolls of some delightful numbers here so I picked up this one uh, on the roll is a cotton it is just got this lovely woven uh, pattern through it it's a little bit damaged on the end but I think as I unroll it more it is um, not stained so I mean I love it it feels beautiful even though it's this off-white it's not actually really see-through it's thick enough that it's not see-through and it just has this really natural beautiful look about it so I'm quite excited to play around with the stripes of this one obviously all of these fabrics need to be pre-washed I'll take them off the rolls pre-wash them because they're damaged and dirty and need to be treated so this one I think is a cotton linen. It's got this beautiful drape to it. It just uh, lies nice and sheer. You can kind of see through there uh, in this green. Um, what do you think? I think it suits. So it's just, yeah, there's, there's a few meters on there. So this one's lovely as well. Again, it's all about the natural fabrics for me. Uh, you'll see all the shirts that I found as well. So uh, then I had a cotton voile here and let's, Oh, this pin is like rusted in here. Oh boy. 
Okay, I might just leave that there for now um, and take care of that later. Uh, so just a really, really sheer cotton voile could be used for linings, for lo lo loose blouses, all sorts of number of things. A few meters on there. I like to have this in my stash. And then I found some cotton corduroy. And now this one is a dark navy, rich royal. You can see how luxurious this looks on the camera here. It's a really electric view. It is blue, it's beautiful. Um, cotton is going to be great again. I think a really nice, uh, beautiful sort of heavy skirt, I think would look amazing. Big, tall waistband. Um, yeah, I'm really excited um, about uh, that one. And again, I have to pre-wash it all of those because, oh. Okay, and I did pick up only a few patterns from her. There were so, so many, but they're mostly all bridal and like cummerbunds and from the 90s and things like that. It was, it was definitely a look into the past of evening wear. So I picked up this one here from the 70s, little waistcoat. I thought it was just so cute. Um, I think this one will be really nice to make a few little um, waistcoats straight out of that, like in that style. And sometimes I just love to get these Vogue designer pieces. This one's an Edith Head one. And I think it has these really like uh, 19, um, early 1930s loungewear vibes that I really love. So I picked up that one too. Okay, let me show you some of these clothing. So uh, this here, I think you're going to love these. This, wait for it, wait for it, is Colots, yes. <laughs> so they're 100% cotton. They have a shirt uh, waistband here. Um, and they're just, I mean, it's going to be amazing. Again, very tropical. What I'm going to do, I think, I, at first I thought I'd turn it into a skirt. I thought it was a skirt, but I really love the collots. Uh, I just, I'm going to have to, I think, um, try and make the waistband higher or lower the crotch so that I can actually wear them up really high where I want. So uh, I may do that one as a video and show you what I do there. Let me know if it's something you're interested in. And this one will be terribly hard to see on camera, but is a lovely peasant style skirt. Just again, 100% cotton. It's this lovely embroidered um, black. It just needs, all it needs is a smaller waistband so it actually fits. And then I have this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, summer skirt for, black skirt for summer. It does have a secondary lining in here. I think I'm actually going to remove it so it's just a single layer because no one needs extra layers around here. So I did actually uh, <laughs> find the linen shirt haul of the, um, you know, of the month of the year. Um, and of course, um, they were all half price. And of course I bought them all, you know what I'm like. So linen shirts are absolutely all I want. I actually foresee some of these being refashioned into just uh, more sleeveless uh, summer uh, ones, like this one here. So this gorgeous blue is like obviously just my color for all of my wardrobe. Um, really nice light linen. I want to, yeah, sort of take off the sleeves, etc. Make a nice little sleeveless number out of that one. This one though, I'll um, wear as is. Isn't this beautiful? So it's just a little like pullover top. Love it. It's just got some little embroidery decoration. Uh, that one should be as is. Sorry, I have pre-washed these and I know they're all wrinkly. Sorry about that. And uh, this one here, another linen one. It's this light blue with this white stripe. It's really nice and summery. Again, I think I will take off all of these pockets and maybe do a sort of more um, yes, casual, just wear every day, um, you know, take off the collar and everything, no collar, no sleeves. Same with this one too. Um, or a little uh, sort of add lots of lace and make it more like um, Edwardian style um, corset cover, something like that. Depending on the style, I'll play around with all of this lace that I just bought, of course. Uh, so yes, I did go a little bit uh, crazy. Uh, there were some really great bargains to find this um, in the past few months. Uh, and of course, as you can see, there are just so many wonderful things out there when you're looking for them to thrift for your sewing that cost almost nothing and is far more sustainable choice than having to buy everything new. This is how I operate, of course, as you most of you know, by collecting things secondhand when you find them and I sew from my stash. So this is how I sew and 
how I, why I collect all of these things, but it's always so fun to see the different treasures that we all find. So I really hope you enjoyed looking through these ones and I hope that you'll find your own uh, thrifted treasures very soon too. So until next time, my sewing friends, happy sewing. <laughs> Bye.